Thank you for joining Alan and me for this Trends Talk. Um, we want you to know what's coming up for our June 23rd and July 22nd uh, webinars. Uh, we've gotten into this rhythm now of uh, he and I come together, uh, do these joint webinars twice a year. Um, to good effect, we, we, we ask each other questions we bounce ideas off of each other and it comes together and I think it comes out during these uh, webinars and now these are really two different type webinars or really a different focus on both webinars yeah you want to speak to that sure I'd be happy to Brian thank you uh, what's going on is that uh, in the first webinar in the June webinar we're going to be looking at some near-term uh, action items near-term uh, lines in the sand what's happening with key indicators We'll see more if there's a second wave uh, coming on, and if there is, what we think the impact will be. Uh, so we, we have that near-term uh, focus that'll be going with a lot of practical discussions uh, about it. But we're also gonna branch into uh, the election. It's on every, a lot of people's minds, and we get so many questions about it, we wanna make sure that we, we get into that. If there's a change in political party in, in the Congress or in the uh, White House or both, what will it mean? What if we'll have to change our forecast, what has to happen if we're gonna change our forecast. Lots to talk about there without taking any sides, of course, but trying to make uh, everyone aware that uh, the ship of state called the economy of the United States uh, is on a course. We can plan on it, watch for these signs, uh, keep your radar going, and we're gonna provide that forward view. And in July, um, that's June. Yeah, absolutely, and I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, one thing I wish is that we could rely on the polling data as we get a little closer to the actual election to uh, <laughs> discern who's the front runner, who's likely going to win. Um, so we really have to keep our options open until uh, the day after, I think. Uh, yeah, boy, isn't that true? And you know, by then, it may not be a, a subject of discussion, but it is now based upon the questions you and I are getting and the rest of the team are getting is, what about all the social unrest? What is that going to do to our outlook? And what does it what is that doing to the economy? Uh, so that's something that we have to make sure we address too, if it's still in play by the 22nd. Yeah, let's hope it's not, but you're absolutely right. But yeah. let's hope it's not. That's right. And And in July, there's some pretty exciting things for us to talk about there, aren't there? Oh, July is where we roll up our sleeves. And, uh, um, you know, the, the, the huge questions are all this deficit spending, right? What is that, what is that going to mean what, to the economy near term? Does this bring in the timing of the Great Depression that we've been forecasting? What does this mean in terms of that 2030s outlook? I mean, that alone is a fascinating topic as far as I'm concerned. And we've got some work to do to get ready to uh, answer those questions more finitely than I think we've been able to do or have chosen to do in recent webinars. Uh, we're going to get into the nitty gritty a bit a, a tad more. That's a really good point because in the answers to the webinars, you know, you, you basically have 30 seconds to provide an answer because you have so many questions to get to. But here, we will parse it out in greater detail. We'll talk more about inflationary aspects, interest rates and, and fiat currency, everything that's on people's minds. One of the big ones is how do we pay for this? And uh, one of my answers is who says we're gonna pay for this? So you know, it gives us a chance to talk about MMT and a whole lot of other things uh, as, as we go along. I'm looking forward to that a lot. And even more information on the second wave will be available in, in uh, if we see more developing there. We certainly hope not, but as you and I have discussed and the whole team, um, data is the answer. So while the headlines are saying things that are not wrong, but they put in adjectives that certainly tell you what you're supposed to do with the data or how you're supposed to interpret the data, uh, you and I will be looking at the data. And as we look at the data, that's an entirely different way to look at the world around us. Absolutely. And the data has been very helpful to you and me and the forecasting team so far. Um, you know, look at the, the GDP results and how close they've come to uh, our forecast so far. And we're constantly asking ourselves, you me, and, and, and the, Jackie and the rest of the forecasters, senior forecasters, what should we be changing our forecasts? What, you know, but it's not like it's cast in granite. This is a very fluid situation. 
And we keep coming back with the data is telling us this. So put the rhetoric aside, put the, dampen down the emotion and stick with the data. And when the data tells us we need to shift, we shift and we have uh, when necessary. Um, but I, I have found it to be very helpful to be data centric. And that's, that's a big part of what I'm hoping we can share uh, really for both webinars. Indeed. And you know, well, I'm going to ask you a question at the uh, July one. I'm going to save it for July, but uh, I'll give you some time to think about it because I was asked this question and it fascinated me. Besides the second wave, what are the second and third biggest risk factors in your mind that you did not talk about today? And those are, uh, those are great questions. I mean, we, we ask ourselves those, as you know, when we're forecasting, we have to write down upside risks and downside risks. Um, so those are great questions. I think we'll ask both upside and downside risks to the forecast. I think that's an important part of, uh, you call it lines in the sand, I call it stakes in the ground, right? It, it tells you whether you're on the path to the results mirroring the forecast or not. So right. uh, we'll talk about those, that's, that's great. That'll be a nice addition to what we do um, on the outside. Yeah, I believe, I believe you're right, and I'm looking forward to that, too. Of course, we'll talk about the stock market. We, we can't help ourselves, so we'll, we'll talk about the stock market <laughs> and, uh, and, and maybe more detail than, than we've been doing in our webinars. I'd like to if there's time. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, one of the fun things, and, and I like doing these with you. This is a gas because it reminds me of our old, our old radio show. Yeah. And uh, we'll be able to take questions from people. And, and boy, isn't that the fun part where we get to see what's on people's minds and answer their question to the best of our ability. And uh, That's where iron sharpeneth iron, I guess, is an expression. I mean, we learn so much from the questions that come in. And it really forces us to hone in on what's real rather than just this ethereal economic world that um, we can sometimes drift into. So I think that you're absolutely right. That is fundamentally crucial and a big part of what we're going to do. Yeah, I agree. It should be a good time. We're going to share some uh, information we don't normally share. We're going to dive deeper in some areas we don't normally dive deeper and answer some fascinating questions. It'll be good. It's going to be great. It's always fun, brother. And along the way, you may even find a way to call me another name. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <I'm sorry. laughs> All right. See you in June and July, we hope. June 23, July 22nd. Please be there. We'll be there. 